One of the projects I've been wanting to do is to install an air compressor in uh, the basement here. And I got just enough room uh, for it, it looks like, right, right in here. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of temporarily mount a small portable cable pancake uh, type air compressor in here. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drill some holes where the mounting feet go into this uh, gray panel and then uh, it'll be kind of a semi-permanent. Well this is a gray plastic panel that came out of that bin. Um, it's uh, common in the marine industry and it's called starboard or seafoam or something like that. There's several different names for it. And it's a plastic polymer and uh, a piece this size that's uh, one half inch thick costs about 80 bucks and uh, well by the time you add shipping and everything you know you're talking 90 95 dollars now originally i was going to buy a new piece to do this project so i didn't damage this one but then i got to thinking you know um my porter cable compact air compressor only cost 99 dollars so why spend 95 dollars uh to protect something that costs 99 dollars so if um if I ever get rid of the RV, then um, I'll just let the air compressor go with it and then just buy another one. So I had thought about possibly cutting this into two sections, and I still may do that. But for now, I think I'll just leave it alone. Um, although it is kind of hard to get in and out, uh, in, out of that door because it's actually wider than the door is. So... Uh, it'll be re it'll be really interesting to see once I get the air compressor on there how easy this is going to be to get in and out, but we'll try. Now I'm in the process of removing the three feet from the bottom of the air compressor. Uh, got one one of them off and the other two, and I've also installed uh, a quick release. Um, valve here where it used to be a real pain the, the original one that came with and you almost had to tip it up on its side and use a, a pair of uh, slot, slip joint pliers to get it off but uh, with this one uh, it's just a nice little quarter turn and opens and closes and if you've got the other style I highly recommend putting this style on and I actually will put a link um, on, the, on the end of this uh, video uh, to where the part number for that. Now it's just a matter of laying out the uh, three holes in the bottom here and and drilling holes through the starboard and then we'll mount these feet back on because they are kind of rubbery. They give some isolation and then we'll put some bolts in here to bolt it to the bottom of this. There's going to be kind of a trick here on getting these things spaced equally and the way I'm going to do it is this first this first uh, hole going to go into this this one here and then the second hole here all I got to do is measure from there to there and then from here to here and, and keep them the same distance from from this uh, edge and then when I get the, the two in then you measure from here to here and then from here to here and draw two arcs a la geometry style in the fourth grade and then uh, that should mark the hole for the last one so we'll see how close we can get. Now we're uh, getting ready to slide this in here. Um, I got the uh, bolts through here and what I did is I used those captive nuts that are uh, have the nylon inserts because uh, these you just want this to float on here. Uh, you don't really want to tie it down too tight because it'll bend it might warp the plastic so we'll see if we can get it in here and then uh, be right back well with uh, great trepidation uh, we got this thing in here and it's in here pretty good um, although it's going to be almost impossible to get into here to get anything so what I may end up doing is what I was originally thinking of doing is cutting right in there so making that into a smaller uh, smaller door but uh, anyway um, that's what it looks like and what I'm going to do the next step is I'm going to put a outlet in here so that I can plug this in permanently or semi-permanently at least so 
that basically wraps up this project and so now wherever I go I have a a uh, nice source of uh, power or source of um, air now this is 150 psi which is more than enough to do these tires I've blown these tires up plenty of times with it and um, so if I'm on the road all I need to do is fire the Jenny up and then the Jenny will power the uh, air compressor and then the air compressor I can use to put air in a tire now I do have road service but um, you know if you're gonna wait an hour and a half just for somebody to put air in your tire you're gonna wait be waiting all day long so uh, for changing tires and things like that yes we'll call those guys up and have them come out but for putting air in a tire that's a simple thing to do so I can do that with this.